Are you ready to cast some spells and ride some broomsticks in Hogwarts Legacy? Before getting into the video, I would like to say that I don't personally agree with JK Rowling and her views. I will talk about that later in the video, and you can also read more about it in the description. If you're a Harry Potter fan, you're probably eager to explore the wizarding world, attend Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, and live out your own magical story. Hogwarts Legacy is an open-world action RPG developed by Avalanche Software. The game is set in the Wizarding World universe, taking place in the late 1800s, about 100 years before the events in the Harry Potter novels. This sounds pretty magical. However, before you decide to buy the game, hold your hippogriffs, because this game might not be worth the galleons at full price. After 40 hours of ravenclawing my way through the puzzles in this game, here is my opinion. Let's start with the graphics. While the Hogwarts castle and surrounding areas look like they were crafted by the finest wizarding architects, the character models and animations are about as magical as a flip phone. It's a bit disappointing to see such a large franchise not get the attention to detail in the visual department. The NPCs you meet feel, without much exception, very blank and doll-like to a point that make them feel more creepy than fun to interact with. In addition, the hamlets that you find scattered around the map also lack personality. If you've seen one, it feels like you've seen them all. I thought this was quite boring, and this lack of attention to detail made exploring the open world feel pointless beyond getting into the side quest up. Where is the fun of exploring the world if it all basically looks the same? The character customization options are also about as limited as a house elf's wardrobe. If you were hoping to spend a few hours creating something truly personal, go play The Sims 4 instead. I was not expecting to freely move around, tilt, and adjust everything to my preference, but I was hoping to see more than this. I was not able to create a truly unique character that reflected my personality and my preferences with these presets, and I doubt you will either. To me, this is a huge letdown, when many people wish to really see themselves in the world that they have been dreaming of for years. I think, however, a lot of the equipment that you can find in this game all look very beautiful and unique, so customizing your outfits when you get new loot has been both an enjoyable experience and it has helped me to express myself through my robes, my hats, and my scarves. Next, the gameplay itself feels a little bit clunky. The combat system is repetitive and it doesn't offer much variety. Once you've fought the same enemy a few times, it honestly just gets boring. What ends up happening is you have to use the same spells and attacks over and over without feeling any sort of progression or improvement, especially after you learn every enemy attack pattern and their weaknesses. I think, however, the way to learn spells was honestly a really good and fun and inspiring idea, but that initial spark of wonder disappeared quickly after for me. There were also a lot of bugs that haunted my magical existence. A nearly constant fog from the outside that would appear inside some of the buildings made it hard to look for chests and other collectibles. A weird light breaking when entering and exiting buildings that practically blinded me and made it so hard to see what was going on inside the building I was entering. So much so that I didn't even want to look at my screen while doing it. The one bug that almost made me completely lose interest and finish this whole game was the infamous biscuit lock bug. This prevented me from completing a side mission where I had to rescue a moon calf, and the lock to the cage was gone. This has since been patched on PC, but these issues combined with the terrible optimization have made me shelve this game for a few weeks, as I didn't feel as immersed in the game anymore. While we're talking about immersion, it's always fun to explore the wizarding world and attend Hogwarts. However, it doesn't actually feel like I'm attending Hogwarts as a school at all. Despite the rules and a few stealthy missions in restricted areas, you don't actually have to be careful when walking around at night. In the missions, you have to cast a disillusionment spell, a charm to disguise the target as its surroundings, but this is no longer needed when you go back to revisit these areas later. There is no bedtime, and you can show up to class pretty much whenever you want by just waiting outside, which adds to the open world aspect, but takes away some of the restrictions I would have liked to see in a school setting. I would have at least liked to see some kind of option for this, so the more hardcore players would need to sneak around every night. 
maybe have a system in place that's more similar to the old games where the night was actually dangerous and you had to sneak around to avoid getting caught. The side quests and activities also get quite repetitive after a while. Using Accio and Summoner's Court is far from fun when you've done it for the hundredth time. Hunting for collectibles is usually a task reserved only for the selected few, but hunting for them in Hogwarts Legacy with Revelio was an honest-to-god nightmare. The fear of missing out on loot or a collectible had me casting this spell about every five seconds in the early game. I'm glad I figured out that you can turn on a visual cue in the accessibility settings, so I didn't have to run around the same areas for three hours looking for the one field page that I was missing. I feel like Revelio was a good tool to push the more casual players into hunting for collectibles. Most people aren't achievement hunters, and making it easier to locate for those not willing to spend hours checking every corner of the castle is a great idea. But the constant plinging and ringing and looking around was even a little bit too much for someone like me, who loves to 100% their games. I can't even begin to imagine how annoying this ringing sound would be for someone who wasn't collecting all the field pages. Moreover, this game lacks some of the charm and humor that I remember from the Wizarding World. The dialogue can be a little predictable and awkward, and the characters don't have that same spark and wit that I would have liked to see. The voices of the characters just don't feel very real to me, paired with the blank faces. There are several things about the game that I have enjoyed. Like, when I found out what year Hogwarts Legacy was set in, I was really happy to see that they had sacrificed historical accuracy to include several characters from different backgrounds. I also found it very nice to sit on the back of Highwing, flying around while enjoying the scenery. Ditching the broom and hopping on a hippogriff made looking for the next Merlin trial even more fun, but it doesn't weigh up for the rest of the mediocrity. Finally, let's talk about the money. At full price, this game simply doesn't offer enough interesting content and polish to be worth the cost at full price. With so many other great games on the market, it's hard to justify spending your hard-earned galleons on a game that falls short in so many areas. After feedback from console players, I believe you would have at least had an overall better experience there compared to playing it on the PC shortly after release. Though I strongly preferred playing with mouse and keyboard, the optimization and bug-free environment yielded a smoother experience on console. After several patches, I think that my PC experience has been enhanced, but it doesn't take away from the fact that the game on release felt severely unplayable. If you're still on the fence about purchasing Hogwarts Legacy, there are a few more things to consider. There are several concerns about the game's representation and inclusivity. Some fans have criticized the game for not allowing players to create transgender characters, and for not addressing the problematic history of J.K. Rowling's transphobic political views. Your character will always be spoken of as the child or with the use of they-them pronouns, and you get to choose if you want to be called a witch or a wizard instead of a boy or a girl. Despite this non-binary friendly option, they completely failed to allow the wizards to wear feminine clothes, like the skirt. So we're almost back to square one. I think it's very important to consider these issues before supporting a game that may not align with your own values and beliefs. While Hogwarts Legacy may seem like a dream come true for many Harry Potter fans, it may not live up to your expectations. With clunky gameplay, some wobbly graphics, and the average storytelling, the game just falls short in so many areas. If you're willing to overlook these flaws and you're comfortable with the game's representation and inclusivity, you may still find some magic, wonder, and enjoyment in exploring the mysteries of Hogwarts Legacy. For most players, I think you'll be better off waiting for a sale or a price drop, or even supporting other games that offer more value for your wizarding wallet. If you still want to play the game, I would recommend borrowing it from a friend if that's at all possible for you. Thank you so much for watching if you made it this far. I'm left with a bitter feeling. Though I have enjoyed certain parts of this game, I do have regrets about purchasing it, even if I don't think that we should make people feel bad for simply wanting to play a game.